T minus 27 seconds and counting, all recorded. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. The human spirit longs for travel, an endeavor to discover new lands, to challenge new waves. Stoked to the max! On the same coastline that Spanish explorer Ponce de Leon landed over 500 years ago, new explorers would be launched vertically and take a giant leap for mankind. Three, two, one. Because that challenge is one that we're willing to accept, one we are unwilling to postpone, and one we intend to win. Keep going, baby. Keep going. Look at it go, hon. We have gone for redundant set sequencer start. Entry interface minus five minutes. We're seeing near zero aileron trim. We're go for air data. You're out of 89K, 2.8 Mach. The uh, tracking data, nav data, and pre-plan trajectory are all one line on our plot boards here. We'll go LOS in 30 seconds here. One minute now to touchdown. Discovery's landing gear will be locked down and into place at 300 feet in altitude. In Florida, every coastal region has a name that represents its claim to fame. Emerald Coast, Sun Coast, Gold Coast. However, there is not a shoreline that has more of a national and even global significance than the Space Coast. Traveling at a rate of 370 miles per hour. While most of us will never be launched in a SpaceX rocket, there is so much to explore on the ground here. 30 seconds until touchdown. In this video, we will show Cocoa Beach, a surfing haven, the quaint historic Cocoa Village, the beaches of Melbourne, India Atlantic Beach, Satellite Beach, see the nature of Florida on an airboat. We will show some nice dining options, cruises out of Port Canaveral, Jetty Park, and of course the number one attraction, the Kennedy Space Center, Titusville, and Canaveral National Seashore. Landing gear now down in Mark. Well, we are ready for touchdown on 72 miles of fun. Florida's Space Coast. Main gear touchdown. Pilot Jim Dutton now deploying the drag chute. Nose gear touchdown. It's morning with sunrise over the Cocoa Beach Pier. You almost always see cruise ships off in the Atlantic here. We stayed at the La Quinta, just across from Lori Wilson Park, a good location in the heart of Cocoa Beach, and one of those hotels where you can park next to your room. Convenient. It was a good clean room. Decent rates. We'll come back to Cocoa Beach later, but we are gonna start our journey in the south part of Rivard County, in Melbourne. If you really want to escape into the fresh air and wildlife of Florida, you have to do an airboat ride. Camp Holly offers a 35 to 40 minute ride on the St. John's River. You'll see gators, turtles, snakes, and more. $32.50 for adults and $20 for children. Camp Holly also has a tiki bar with live music, gift shop, park area, with an observation deck. An indoor restaurant is coming soon, but now food trucks on site for sandwiches and other fare. This area is popular for fishing. Just north of Camp Holly at Lake Washington Park on the shores of Melbourne's largest lake are two other options for airboat rides, as well as a nice park with picnic pavilions and playground. Moving further north in Melbourne is the Brevard Zoo, home to more than 900 animals representing species from Florida, South America, Africa, Asia, and Australia. $25 for adults and $16 for kids. Also located at the zoo is Treetop Trek Aerial Adventures, where you can zip line, climb, crawl through the lush Florida landscapes. 10 miles south of the zoo is Club 52 at Melbourne Greyhound Park. While there is no longer Greyhound racing here, there is a simulcast of thoroughbred, greyhound racing, and highlight action, as well as poker and Vegas-style games. 
O'Galley is an art district section of Melbourne, located near the O'Galley Causeway. Squid Lips is located here, a waterfront restaurant serving unique prepared seafood dishes. You have to try the bacon wrapped scallops and smoked fish dip here. Order for takeout and eat on the O'Galley U-shaped fishing pier with a great view of the Indian River. We now head south on Highway 1 towards the next causeway, US 192, to check out historic downtown Melbourne. This part of Melbourne dates back to the 1800s. A charming part of the city was shopping, dining, and events. The Helen Blazes Brewing operates out of a fully renovated 120-year-old former hardware and farm supply store. Plenty of eateries, a Korean sushi and Thai restaurant, a cigar shop and lounge, Jacqueline's Bakery, an antique store. Get fresh oils and vinegars at From Olives and Grapes. Three miles south of downtown is Andretti Thrill Park, a sprawling amusement park with go-kart tracks, a ropes course, walking train, laser tag, and mini golf. Okay, it's time to head towards some of the most highly reviewed beaches on Florida's east coast. We take the Melbourne Causeway. It ends at India Atlantic Beach, which we will come back to. But for now, we'll make a right on A1A and head south to Ponce de Leon Landing Beach. Did Ponce really land here? One historian resailed Ponce de Leon's trip using his detailed logs and says he landed in Melbourne Beach, while other historians say it was closer to St. Augustine. What we do know is that this is a nice 25-acre secluded beach park, 11 miles north of Sebastian Inlet, which we will show in the Treasure Coast video. A mile north of Ponce de Leon Landing is Sandy Shores Resort. Are you traveling in an RV? Check out Melbourne Beach Mobile Park. Next to the RV park is Spessard Holland South Beach Park. It has a 100-foot dune boardwalk, outdoor showers, two indoor showers, sheltered picnic tables, Spessard Holland golf courses across the street. A half mile north of the South Beach is Spessard Holland North Beach Park. It has everything the South Beach has, plus concessions where you can get burgers, fries, coffee, and more. Also more picnic tables for eating. No playgrounds at either the North or South Beach Park, but a nice beach to relax and enjoy the ocean. One of the nice things about most of the beaches of Melbourne is the parking is free. Curtis Bird Park with sand volleyball courts and colorful picnic tables. This beach tends to have more people than the other beaches in Melbourne because it's centrally located and has a beach bar and restaurant nearby. We now move to the river side of the island to the Melbourne Beach Pier. The pier is located at Rickman Park. This is one of the best places for viewing sunsets on the Space Coast. Multiple benches socially distanced facing the Indian River. This pier was built in 1889 by the Melbourne and Atlantic Railroad. It has a large shelter at the end. Rickman Park also has a basketball court, a nice playground, and tennis courts. The Rickman House, one of the first homes in Melbourne Beach, Across the street from the park is Dejan Steak and Lobster House. Moving back to the ocean side of the island, India Atlantic Beach is at the end of US 192 in the Melbourne Causeway. This is the ideal beach for those coming from inland or west coast Florida who just want a quick getaway at the beach. A super long parking lot, eateries here to get a bite to eat. This was the only beach south of Cocoa Beach where I noticed it had paid parking, old fashioned meters. A nice long boardwalk here. A restaurant that we really liked here was Lily's Mediterranean Grill. They had a wide variety of good healthy food wraps. Their cheesecake is out of this world. No, Bella, that's my cheesecake. You can pick up your food and walk across the street and enjoy a good meal. I chose a Euro wrap. What a great setting to enjoy a meal. Also here is James H. Nance Sea Turtle Park with a playground, showers. Many sea turtles lay eggs here, as well as baby turtles making their way back to the ocean. Two sand volleyball courts, another long boardwalk. A couple miles north of India Atlantic Beach is Howard E. Fudge Park at Paradise Beach, 
with several amenities, showers, food trucks, sand volleyball, and badminton courts. And two good playgrounds, a super large pavilion. I really love the accessibility to the public beaches on the Space Coast. While the west coast of Florida has the sunsets, you often find not enough parking or much of the coastline is not accessible to the general public. But here you find many public park beaches. Easy and often free parking close to the beach just makes it real easy. I think it's a big advantage to the east coast beaches. Oh, and did I mention the waves? Stoked to the max! There is good surfing along the east coast. A mile north of Paradise Beach is Canova Beach Park. This is where O'Galley Causeway, Florida Route 518, ends at. The other side of this O'Galley Causeway is where we were earlier in historic Melbourne. Just want to show you what the drive is like on the O'Galley Causeway. Again, plentiful and free parking here. Canova Beach Park is a dog-friendly beach with a pavilion, grill, restrooms, and outdoor showers, and also a wheelchair-accessible dune crossover. Now just north of the Old Galley Causeway is the Satellite Beach Skate Park. Plenty of single family homes along this beach. We are just south of Patrick's Air Force Base, so you often see military planes in the air. Route A1A here, named for Corporal Dustin Schrage, a Marine from Brevard County, who died in 2004 serving in Iraq. Without brave men and women like him, we would not be able to enjoy these beautiful beaches. Two miles north of Canova Beach is Pelican Beach Park, which was completely renovated in 2007. Two sand volleyball courts, a newer playground. This is perfect for a family gathering, with six pavilions and barbecue grills, which can be rented. It also has a good playground. On Thursdays is the Satellite Beach Farmer's Market, a wheelchair accessible dune crossover. Two miles north of Pelican Beach is Hightower Beach, a super long boardwalk here. We are now in a drone restricted area, so we will just show you this beach with a GoPro. Route A1A passes right through Patrick Air Force Base. You go right by the airstrip. You are able to pass right through on the highway without going through any security gates. On the north side of Patrick Air Force Base is Cocoa Beach. We are going to go over the Cocoa Beach Causeway to the city of Cocoa. We cross over two rivers here. First, the Banana River, as we enter Merritt Island. Then we cross over the Indian River. On the north side of the causeway is the Intracoastal Waterway Park on Merritt Island, with picnic tables, a nice long boardwalk over the water. As we enter the city of Coco, on the right is the Indian River Queen. They do a three-hour dinner show cruise, often with live entertainment. It is $64 for adults and $42 for children. Historic Coco Village is a vibrant gathering place for both locals and tourists. A very pedestrian friendly district with entertainment shops and ethnic restaurants with outdoor seating. At Mert Tharp Square, there are special events and entertainment. We found this monkey here. A Space Coast Visitor Center is here with really nice murals on the outside. The Coco Village Playhouse first opened in 1924. With its musicals, it has a nickname of Broadway on Brevard. Dine in the Bel Air Courtyard with French cuisine at the Café Margot. For my British friends across the pond, here's one for you. A British pub, the Georgian Dragon English Tavern. How about some German food at the Von Stefan Village Beer Garten restaurant with a vintage German courtyard. The Pub Americana, outside the Blind Lion, a jazz and blues club. You will find this village to be very dog friendly. Also part of Cocoa Village is Taylor Park with beautiful trees. 
shaded benches, a playground, a rose garden. It is connected to Riverfront Park, which has an amphitheater where concerts are held, a splash pad, and boardwalk. Really, the two parks are really just one big waterfront park recreation area. We start to head back towards Cocoa Beach on the Merritt Island Causeway. On the south side of the Hubert Humphrey Bridge, long fishing piers from the remnants of the original bridge to Merritt Island, constructed in 1917. We saw the Intracoastal Waterway Park on the north side of the causeway. Well, here it is on the south side. The Mirror Island Causeway turns into the Cocoa Beach Causeway. Constitutional Bicentennial Park, popular for kiteboarding. We now enter Cocoa Beach. We are going to get a bite to eat at the Sunset Waterfront Grill and Bar. This restaurant has a nice open-air patio seating. Or you can also enjoy seating out right on the boardwalk. I am going to try the grilled shrimp and eat it right on the boardwalk. You can also take a two-hour narrated cruise here with Island Boat Lines. It is $36 for adults and $26 for children 3 to 12. For an eco-cruise where you may see manatees, flocks of birds, playful dolphins on the Banana River. Totally tubular! The statue of Kelly Slater, a surfer who grew up in Cocoa Beach. Kelly has won 11 world titles. This pose represents one of his signature moves. The Cocoa Beach Skate Park is located near Cocoa Beach High School. We start in the south part of Cocoa Beach at the Minuteman Causeway, the first of four popular beach access points we will show. Coconuts on the beach with live music and entertainment. And on the other side, the Beach Shack, which features blues bands several nights a week. We are here in the early morning, so that is why it looks empty now. Normally, this area is bustling with activity. A couple of blocks from the beach on Route A1A are more eateries. A Thai and sushi restaurant. The Latin Shark for some great Latino food. With murals on the side of the building. Juice and Java, an artsy cafe with live music. A great place to start the day with coffee. A mile and a half north of Minuteman Causeway is Lori Wilson Park with a long boardwalk through the lush trees and sand dunes, a great place for bird watching. There are pavilions and barbecue grills here. This is really a nice place during the summer because so many trees for shade. Another mile north of Lori Wilson Park is Lighthouse Mini Golf in Three Scoops Ice Cream Parlor with specialty milkshakes. Across the street is Motel 6, recently renovated and always pet friendly. Also a grocery store across the street. Next to the Four Point Sheridan is the famous Ron John Surf Shop. A shop that is so big, it is an attraction in and of itself. Everything you could possibly need here. Also Ron John Water Sports across the street for rentals. At Good Breeze Kiteboarding, you can get equipment or take lessons on kiteboarding. Something that is popular here because of the good winds off of the Atlantic Ocean. The Inn at Cocoa Beach, a resort in this area. At the end of the Cocoa Beach Causeway is Allen Shepherd Park, named after the first American to travel into space. You will find in most places at Cocoa Beach, you are gonna have to pay to park. It is not like Melbourne Beach where parking was free. A nice super long boardwalk here. Several bars and eateries. Captain Jay's with rooftop dining for a great view of the beach. We are going to eat at a place next door that was recommended by one of our subscribers. The popular Sandbar Sports Grill. A surfer style sports tavern with multiple TVs, pub grub, and live music. One of their famous dishes is Gator Tacos. This was about $25 but really easily enough for two people with all the plantains. At Allison Beach Rentals you can also rent surfboards, bodyboards, or umbrellas and lounges so that you can really lay out on the beach in style. Everybody swimming in sunshine, everybody feeling fine, everybody join the fun line, ain't nobody left behind. Another three quarters of a mile up the beach is really the center of Cocoa Beach, the Cocoa Beach Pier. Parking at the pier is $15 Monday through Friday, but free after 4 p.m. Saturday and Sunday it is $20 and free after 5 p.m. The pier is 800 feet long and home to restaurants, bars, gift shops, live music. 
The Ricky Tiki Tavern on the end of the pier, a laid-back cocktail lounge, full bar, tropical drinks, with table and bar seating. Now that we've arrived here, I would not change a thing. Knew that we'd survive here, and all the goodness we would bring. Of this I sing. Everybody swimming in sunshine. Everybody feeding fine. Everybody join the front line Ain't nobody left behind Everybody swimming in sunshine Everybody A half mile north of the pier on Route A1A is Cocoa Beach Aerial Adventures where there are 49 unique challenges on 45 foot poles in the air as well as seven different trails with three levels of difficulty. It is $50 for adults, kids 7 to 13, $39, and children 5 to 6, $28. Next to the aerial park is the Beachside Grand Prix Go Kart Experience. And Golf and Gators, a mini golf with a mining experience as well. A mile north of the pier is Cape Canaveral city limits. From here to the inlet at Jetty Park is mostly resort condos along the shoreline. Royal Mansions Resort is about a mile south of Jetty Park. You can book extended stays for weekly or monthly here. A look at the inlet at Jetty Park. You can see some of the launching pads in NASA's vehicle assembly building off in the distance. This is about as close as we can get with the drone because the airspace becomes restricted at this point. Jetty Park is $16 to enter and you have to buy your tickets online prior to arrival. No dogs allowed here. It is worth admission, a great place to watch the boats sail out of Port Canaveral, like the Orlando Princess, a fishing charter. A half-day, six-hour trip is $60 to $70 for adults, or $50 to $60 for children. A full-day, nine-hour trip is about $15 more. You never know what you'll see coming out of the port. This is also a good place to watch the launches. Victory Casino, with over 600 slots and 27 casino games, including roulette and craps tables, five bars and two dining rooms, a five-hour day cruise, and a six-hour evening cruise sails out daily. It is $13. Food and drinks are additional. You can also camp here at Jetty Park. Exploration Tower is a unique building with seven floors of interactive exhibits and an observation deck, plus a cafe and gift shop. On this day, it had said it was closed, and yes, the exhibits were closed, but you were still allowed to go to the observation deck, and because the exhibits were closed, there was no charge to go to the observation deck. Information for Exploration Tower, as well as Jetty Park, can be found at portcanaveral.com recreation. A Disney cruise headed out to sea. Seven and eight night cruises on the Disney Fantasy to the Western Caribbean, as well as three and four night cruises on the Disney Dream to the Bahamas, head out of Port Canaveral. We now take A1A over the Banana River as we begin to head towards the Kennedy Space Center. Kelly Park is located on the other side of the river. This park has picnic pavilions with barbecue grills, horseshoe pits, volleyball courts, a nice long rounded boardwalk, and a boat launch. Space Coast River Tours is located here with a two-hour wildlife cruise that is $34 for adults and $25 children 3 to 12. Calumel Windsurfing and Water Sports is also located here with rentals and lessons on windsurfing. Now it's time to head up Route 3 to the number one attraction of the Space Coast. The Kennedy Space Center is $57 for adults and $47 children 3 to 11. The Rocket Garden is where you can see rockets from NASA's Mercury, Gemini, and Apollo programs. At University 8, I see a film about the team behind the Apollo program, Mission Control. Kids can ride an astronaut training simulator or go for a shuttle launch experience. See an IMAX film. You can also see the actual space shuttle Atlantis and experience more than 60 interactive exhibits in the Atlantis building. Kids can explore the modules of the International Space Station inside of Atlantis. Planet Play, an indoor interactive area where children can play on the planets. You can discover what is currently happening with NASA. Just this week, the Perseverance rover landed on Mars. The Kennedy Space Center also has a kennel where you can keep your dog while you are visiting. So much to see here. Make sure you allow some time to visit. The closest hotel to the Space Center is the Cape Crossing Resort in Marina, about 11 miles from the visitor complex. In fact, we were going to stay here, 
but things just worked out where it was just better for us to be in Cocoa Beach. But this is a nice resort on the Indian River Lagoon. They have vacation condo rentals for extended stays, nice boat docks, and you can rent a boat here at Cape Crossing Boat Rentals, so it makes it real convenient. We now head north on Highway 1 to Titusville. There are a few parks along this highway that are ideal for watching launches. One of the best spots is Kirk Point Riverside Park, right across the Indian River from the Kennedy Space Center, with a nice fishing pier as well. I can't be loud clear, okay? We're launching today. Another good place to watch the launches, as well as a good place to eat in Titusville, is Shiloh Steak and Seafood Restaurant with a waterfront deck. I had their giant crab cake, delicious. Titusville has a nostalgic downtown filled with quirky shops. The city's motto is gateway to nature and space, and that is primarily what people come here for. And your trajectory lofting is uh, NA, it's nominal. Sandpoint Park near the Amax Brewer Bridge is a large waterfront park. It has pavilions which can be rented out, with picnic tables, kitchen, and grills located near the shoreline. Also playground benches and restrooms. A one-lane boat ramp. The Titusville Marina and the Westland Boatyard and Marina are good places to dock a boat and get services with laundry facilities. Well, we are just about done with our journey. Just have one more area to show you, the Canaveral National Seashore. On the other side of the Amax Brewer Bridge is Parish Park at Titusville which provides access to the Indian River Lagoon for fishing and water sports. A large park with 47 spaces for boat trailers and a good place to view launches from as well. We now take the Amax Brewer Parkway to some of the most undisturbed nature areas of the Space Coast. Well, these will be the final aerial shots we will show you as the Canaveral National Seashore is drone restricted. The Oak and Palm Hammock Trails are located six miles from downtown Titusville. They are populated with live oaks, cabbage palm, laurel oak, pignut hickory, red maple, and American elm. It is $20 to enter the Canaveral National Seashore by car, but that includes entrance for seven days. It is a little bit of a drive from Titusville to the shoreline at Playlanda Beach, about 12 miles. While this is known to be a clothing optional beach, it is really only one small part of it. Boardwalk 13, I believe. So it's not like you're gonna see a bunch of nude people around. This shoreline extends for 24 miles, all the way to New Smyrna Beach, some of the most pristine and serene coastline you will find. The Space Coast not only provides inspiration from past challenges met, but also exciting hope of future endeavors moving forward. A unique shoreline where you can see God's undisturbed nature, as well as seeing man's incredible achievements. We have included info below to help you plan your Space Coast getaway. We are Tampa Aerial Media. For licensing or stock footage, contact us at info at tampaaerialmedia.com. Next week, we go inland to Lake County, Florida. Show some areas you may have never heard of. Claremont, Mount Dora, Leesburg, and Eustis. We know people watch our Florida videos both for travel and for those interested in moving to our great state. While most of the time, it is more centered on travel. Next week, it will be focused just as much on those looking to move to Florida. May we all face our own challenges with that same determination that JFK spoke of in 1962. From Florida's Space Coast, I wish you all success in your personal challenges.